and I thank you, Jerry, for all the love you pour into this building. Now I'd like to call up the woman who, without her hairstyling skills, we would have long, bushy hair, including Jim. No creative food ideas and no beautiful violin music. She is a loving sister who, who always makes time for others and has been there for me when I need it. She is a beautiful daughter of God and will be a lifetime friend. Please join me in welcoming our 2012 valedictorian, Louise Hootley. This life was not meant to be the place of our perfection, but the preparation for it. The first time I read this quote, I thought of it as being just another nice quote. But then I really looked at it, and it began to speak to me about what our journey here at St. Hayes has been. A very, very difficult thing in life for me has been accepting this that this life was not meant to be the place of our perfection, but the preparation for perfection. As a perfectionist, every time I do something and it doesn't turn out perfectly, then in my mind, I failed. This is very difficult when trying new things because it most often takes time to become good at something that is new. This fear of failing has kept me from trying many things in life, Coming to this school was no different. I came here wanting to excel at every little thing and not want, wanting to ever have to stumble. Needless to say, I did stumble a lot, and I did not like this. During our first month here, we were taught a lot of the foundations of what it means to walk the little way of St. Therese of Lisieux. We learned the importance of doing the duty of the moment, how even the seemingly small things matter, how simply picking up a pin from the floor can bring God glory. It all seemed so easy, so simple. Surely there must be more to it. How can making my bed in the morning, when done with the right attitude, be considered carrying my cross? Does it really matter that much? How could this really be it? Aren't there bigger things we need to do? More important things? My thought was, well, this year is going to be a walk in the park. It did start off being easier at first, because everything was new and exciting. It was so nice to be in such a safe environment where we each shared a common belief and were away from the worries of the world. But then it became easy to become too comfortable, to not want to step outside of my comfort zone to get distracted from doing the duty of the moment, to brush things off as not being that important. I was talking about this with someone during the year, and we came upon a quote from one of Catherine Doherty's books, where it talks about how if I am supposed to be doing the dishes, but end up replying to an email instead, God no longer is with me. He is still waiting for me by the kitchen sink. I found myself feeling discouraged, feeling like I would never be able to achieve this height of holiness. What seemed so easy at the beginning of the year suddenly felt impossible. It was so easy to let myself get distracted by so many other little things that I was forgetting what was truly important, and that is to be attentive to following God's will for me. That by not doing the duty of the moment, I was stepping ahead of God's grace for me. The little way didn't seem so little anymore. A quote from Blessed John Henry Newman really struck me where it said, Love is never past or future. It is only now. That is why holiness is simply doing the duty of the moment. Once I understood the importance of this, I began to see what was meant by a fellow student when he was talking about how this is not just a faith formation program, it is a life formation program. It is giving us the tools we need 
to continue to grow and strive to become saints in teaching us what truly matters in life, giving us a purpose to become a people of hope. As Jim often told us throughout the year, it's about knowing who we are, where we come from, and where we are going. I myself grew up in a Catholic family. I always went to church and believed what I was taught to believe. I knew my parents were strong in their faith, and so I just accepted everything about it and never questioned it. I was living through my parents' faith instead of making it my own. Whenever I had questions about the faith, I would just ask my dad for the answer instead of going the extra mile and doing the research myself. It was within the last few years that I found myself being faced with the question, why do I believe what I believe? All of a sudden, living through my parents' faith wasn't good enough. I wanted to know why I believed what I believe, instead of just taking it all for granted. I wanted my faith to become the priority in my life. I wanted to truly live, live with a purpose. Our year here at St. Therese has helped us to grow in so many ways, to grow in our faith, to go deeper, to not be afraid to ask those important questions, to find our purpose, to heal in so many areas where we didn't even know needed healing, to dare to be different, to become more of the person God created us to be. To the staff, thank you for being the witness you are to us. We will never forget when the incident happened with the boiler this past fall. I was so touched by the faith you all expressed. This was a true test on your trust of God's provision. I remember all of us sitting in the student lounge asking Jim what would happen now. Will the school be able to keep going with what seemed like an impossible amount of money that would be needed in order to replace the boiler? Jim's answer was one of full trust and confidence in God that if God wanted the school to keep going, he would provide. This would simply be proof that God is in control. We were going to keep going like we always did. God had provided before. If he chose to, he could do it again. The faith you showed us was such an incredible witness to all of us. Thanks for all your guidance, all the guidance you have given us throughout the year, for never giving up on us for constantly pushing us to do our best, not to settle for mediocrity, and to help us become the men and women we are called to be. To our families, thank you for all the sacrifices you have done for us to bring us to the point in our lives where we were ready to embark on this journey at St. Therese. Your love and guidance has been so appreciated. To our benefactors, thank you for all your support and prayers. We wouldn't be here right now without your generosity. You practice the little way in a big way. I hope someday we will be able to pass on to others some of the gifts you have provided for us. To the Bruno community, thank you for welcoming us so lovingly. We still remember our first Sunday at St. Bruno Parish where you served us coffee and treats so we could get to know you better. You made us feel a part of the community from day one. We have also enjoyed our many walks around town, stopping in your nice stores for purchasing treats and enjoying friendly chats. To my brothers and sisters at St. Therese, through the laughter and the tears, we have had many moments that I will cherish forever. I will never forget all those games of floor hockey, catchphrase, baseball, movie nights, and bonfires, but also all the times we were able to share our ups and downs together as a group, stand by each other's sides as we went through triumph, learn together in classes, and simply being there for each other in times of need. I have been so blessed to have been a part of this journey along with all of you. Each one of you have, has been a special part of our life here at St. Therese. These past nine months have brought so many opportunities for us to grow closer to God and each other. 
Even though we will each go our separate ways, we will always share a special bond. I want to thank each of you for being the men and women that you are and for all the moments we have shared together. This year has brought many friendships that will last a lifetime. I will be keeping each of you in my prayers. Now let us not forget the wise and humble words of our good Saint Therese of Lisieux. Perfection consists in being what Jesus wills us to be. I know we still have a long way to go, but I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life deepening my relationship with God, loving Him and serving Him in everything I do. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Louise. God has great things in store for you and has already started working throughout this year. You are a strong woman in Christ. I see that you have learned to surrender and trust in God. I'd really like to thank you and God for journeying with me and becoming my sister in Christ this year. Hey, Krista, do you like my new haircut? Isn't it overwhelming? <laughs> no, not really at all. But that speech was, thank you, Louise, so much for representing us so well. It's been a pleasure journeying with you this year. 